What's going on YouTube? Today on Project Echo, we're gonna try and diagnose if we have a bad coil pack or not. I'm gonna show you how to do it and hopefully a trick that might save you a little bit of money. First things first, let's pull the car into our new working station, which is my driveway. One of the easy telltale signs of a bad coil pack is gonna be a really rough idle. Pop the hood and remove the plastic cover that's over top of the engine. The next thing we need to get to is these little caps that hold the plastic shroud on. Because these caps are on here so tight, I'll have to think of another way to take them off. While I'm ripping out the caps, I'm completely defenseless. For instance, the first move could be like this. I could leap like a freak, then throw in a back snapping eel strike. The best approach would be to go for both caps at once. And this is to go even further beyond! Ah! <laughs> Simply remove the caps. Make sure to put the caps somewhere you won't lose them. Now we can remove the shroud. With the shroud out of the way, you can finally see what we're working with here. There's gonna be four coil packs, three, four. Now let me show you what to do next. Depending on when your coil pack is messing up, you might need an assistant for this next part. You also need a small flathead screwdriver. The smaller the better, typically. Now what we're going to be doing is pushing down on the end of the connector, slightly prying up with the screwdriver on the other half, and then pulling it straight out. You may not be able to hear it so easily once it's started. The reason I say you may need some assistance with this next part is because you may have to have the car in gear to make sure that the coil pack misfires. For instance, in my example, it doesn't really work when I'm in park, but when I'm in drive or reverse, the car will start to shimmy back and forth like you saw in the beginning clip. So let's go ahead and start the car and see if it gives us the issue where I want it to. Now I have a slight miss, but it's nothing very crucial. But if I put it into reverse, now we've got a miss. So I'm gonna need an assistant for this next part. With my lovely wife slash assistant holding her foot on the brake and the car in reverse, I'm going to systematically unplug the coil packs until I find one that doesn't change how the vehicle is running. This means that that is our bad coil pack. Hopefully I'll be able to show this on camera. Wow, that engine is shaking like crazy. Okay, let's make this fast. I'm gonna start with number one and work my way down. <laughs> well, that was easy. Did you see when I removed the second one, how the car started to die? That means that that coil pack is currently working. Let's move on to number three. Same with number three, it continued to run even though it was unplugged, but it tried to die. Final conclusion, number one is the bad cylinder. So if we replace that one, we should be good to go. Now that we know which coil pack is the bad one, we can start the removal and replacement process. Each one of these is gonna be held on by a 10 millimeter socket. Oh man, <laughs> that was on there much tighter than I thought it would be. I'm gonna go ahead and unplug it again. Okay, move that out of the way. Finish taking out the threaded bolt. Place that somewhere you won't lose it. And then pull up. Look at all this coolant on this coil pack. We may have a much bigger problem here than I originally anticipated. But being wet sure isn't helping the situation. I'm gonna do myself a favor right now and remove the spark plug in this cylinder as well. I have a 5 ace socket uh, with the spark plug insert in it, along with a long extension and my 3 ace ratchet. That is one wet spark plug. That's definitely not a good sign. <laughs> I'm gonna clean up all of my electronics and then try the reassembly process to see if that makes a bit of difference. I can clean these parts all I want, but I have a sneaky suspicion that we actually have a blown head gasket in here. How else could coolant be getting into the block like that? 
Oh, crap baskets. Let's go ahead and reinsert the spark plug like I didn't find a problem like I just did. Here's another fun problem. Now the socket end is stuck down in the hole. A long set of needle nose pliers will usually solve this problem. Or, if I'm patient enough, and I don't rage quit, yeah, there we go. It's so wet down there. That is terrible, terrible news. Like, just about as bad as it can be. Now where did I put that coil pack? Go ahead and slide the coil pack down over top. And then we'll get the screw for the coil pack. We'll thread that in. Tighten her down with our 10 millimeter socket. We attach the connector. And I guess let's uh, start her back up and see how it runs. Well, it does seem to run a little bit better. Maybe, just maybe, there was a chance that that screw wasn't tightened down all the way and water somehow got underneath the cover and then seeped into it, but that's just wishful thinking. I'm guessing the head gasket's either blown or on its way, but it's running really good for a car with a blown head gasket if that's the case. Now, we can check out the back here for smoke And it's, it's not blowing anything. I would expect there to be tons of coolant coming out of it. Unless there's no coolant in the car. That could also be it. Now that the problem has magically solved itself, I'm gonna put the valve cover on and imagine I didn't do any of this work today and it's always run great. Be sure to tighten things down securely with your 10 millimeter socket. I'm gonna go ahead and take her for a cruise around the block. That way, if it breaks down on me, I'll be close enough to where I can push it home. Thank goodness these cars are so light. Well, there you have it. Problem seems to have gone away once I wiped off that plug. Now as to why that plug was so wet, I may have some ideas, and it may have been from running the car without any coolant in it for about 10 minutes. Um, anyway, I'm just gonna imagine it's all fixed. That's what most car owners do. So uh, thanks for watching this how to replace coil pack issues, even if you don't have a coil pack issue. And man, is it hot out here. Whew. Anyway, thanks very much for watching Thousand Dollar Car Guy, and I hope to see you on the next episode. Over and out. I should probably move my tools before they fall into the engine. You know, just, just a general idea.